black entertainment television. During the commercial break, how many times have you heard me say the best part of this show is what happens in the commercial breaks? So Quick was cussing me out during the commercial break <laughs> about calling him and eight rappers. Don't call us rappers. Stop calling us rappers, Tavis. Why you tell me that? Well, because we, it's obvious we do a whole lot more thinking than to be labeled as rappers. You know what I mean? I mean but being called a rapper isn't an insult, is it? Mm, well, to me, it's, it's kind of limiting. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not just right. a rapper. Right. You know, we're businessmen. Look at this man. How many albums? Seven? Mm -hmm. Come on, man. That's so, so you were just a rapper, you couldn't have done all that? Uh, no, you can't. Because uh -huh. a rapper only, you know, takes care of half of the, um, you know, the responsibilities for that. You got to be an entrepreneur. You got to be an expediter. You got to take out the, uh, the trash and the in the studio when it gets full, you know what I'm saying, to keep the en the energy comfortable. So he, to do seven albums, he had to be more But, but quick, it's a lot easier for me to say rapper than to say entrepreneur, <laughs> curator of energy. Well, okay, you know what? <laughs> it's a lot quicker, a lot faster. Why not just call him MC8? I'll do that. If he was labeled as a rapper, that would be his name. I'm, I'm rapper. Right. You know, that's MC8. We'll do that. Quick. We'll do that. Speaking of congratulations, let me congratulate my friend, DJ Quick, curator of energy. <laughs> <laughs> this weekend, you received the key to the city in Compton. Oh, Your hometown yeah. is giving you the highest honor you can receive, the key to the city, so uh, congratulations you, in advance on that. Thank you, definitely. How do you make you feel? I, I, nice, I suspect. Yeah, actually, pretty mm -hmm. good. I mean, the funny thing, I want to rewind all the way back to these label things, right? Right. Um, it's obvious that we had to go through some hard times and write about them to become who we are now as far as popularity goes. Right. Um, the funny thing is how the media kind of misconstrues things, how the media, our perception, you know, from their point of view. If you look at it, if you, uh, dial, if you bring up like DJ Quick, you know, dot com, if you go on the internet and look up anything under me, if it's not up on the Arista, you'll find a little a memo, you know, you'll find a, you know, an entry about a murder that happened at my house, as opposed to all the deposited things that I've done. And it makes me wonder, it makes me feel bad, it makes me not want to subscribe to the internet sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, how come that's the only, that's the, the, is this what you want people to know about me? So I'm glad that you have shows like BET Live from LA to let me speak my piece. They don't tell you about the things like we just did, like this weekend, me, Tony Lane, Toddy T, you know, uh, King T out in Compton. We just threw one of the biggest bashes, a pool party and a, uh, and a, like an after party with nothing but bloods and crips, Santana Block, Compton Treetop. You know what I'm saying? I said, they said all these sets together mm -hmm. in peace, in harmony, no arguments. Despite how much liquor was consumed, no arguments, no fights, no bad energy. We bringing it together. You see this man, me and this man, come on, man. We used to be arch rivals. Right, for sure. You know? Now I'm going to make sure he ain't got no boogers in his nose when we on TV. You <laughs> see what I'm saying? <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm sure Aid appreciates that, doesn't he? For sure. I'm sure he appreciates that. Let me know about that one. I now. hear you. Eddie in California, thanks for holding you on BET tonight, and I'm glad you called, Eddie. Uh, yeah, this question was qu for quick. I heard him say he was starting a new label up. Uh, what, I, I know y'all get tired of people throwing demos in your face all the time, but what would you say to like somebody who's young, who does a lot of writing, and you know they want to they wanna get involved in the business, but they don't exactly know how to come at somebody when they, when they see somebody who's like made it or, you know, done a lot of stuff in the, in, in, in the entertainment business? Mm -hmm. The best thing to do, bro, all, all jokes aside, good music and presence sell you. Like your, your music, if it's proper, Believe it. Believe me. We'll come looking for you. You know what I'm saying? We'll hear, we'll hear you probably word of mouth. We'll hear about you. Um, the, the, the good thing for me is, is that, that works for me, rather, if you approach me, just don't be pushy. You know, I mean, I'm going to give you a minute and, you know, and hear what you're about, and I'm going to be like, shoot me a tape, because the best thing that, you know, I could do is listen to your tape when I'm comfortable, like later. You know, don't, don't make me listen to it right there in front of you to where I'm a form of opinion. My, my facial expressions is going to tell you the truth, so... You know, the best thing to do is hone in on it, concentrate on the songs that you do, concentrate on, like, just like three. Don't try to do the whole album if you're just starting. You know what I'm saying? Concentrate on the songs that you want to make, make an impact with and start delivering. In a, in a minute, let me get one more call in here, but I want to ask you in a minute whether or not, to piggyback on Eddie's question, you think it's getting harder or easier to break in this business? Harder or easier to break in? Roia in Michigan, you're on the air, and I'm glad you called, Roia. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, two short things. First, do you believe in God? And if you do, how are you yeah. using your talent for God through your music? Because the Bible says that when we're blessed with talents, that we should use them for God. Okay, Roy, we'll throw that question to quick, and uh, eight. we'll start with eight. I believe in God, but it, it's, 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 it's a tricky question to say because, you know, this is a talent that God gave me, you know. Sure. So it's kind of hard to say that. 
Go ahead. It's kind of hard to say that he doesn't want me to do what I do. I mean, I'm not telling, you know, God looks down on us. He sees us. He knows right from wrong. He knows if we, like you say, he knows when we're bad, he knows when we're he good. He knows me. He knows my heart. So he knows even though I get in the studio and I might say a foul, say a few foul words and I might talk of a situation that I didn't like, he knows when I leave the studio, I'm going to go to church on Sunday. I'm going to sit down with my family in a normal fashion. We're going to have, it's, it's normal. I mean, it's like I'm not using this to exploit, okay, God gave me the talent to, to, to rap, so now I'm just going to rap evil. But, you but, know? There, but there, are a lot of folk, there are a lot of folk who say quick, as you well know, that while all talent is God-given, mm -hmm. that it is possible, though, to bastardize the talent that God gave. Mm -hmm. And use it for the wrong reasons, purposes. Um, my thing is this. Um, when it comes to religion, I kind of, I can't, by me being a producer, I'm a very open-minded person, and there are a lot of good points in all beliefs, in all religions, that I apply to my life, you know? Mm -hmm. I can't just, I can't generalize and say, okay, it's about Jesus Christ, and it's about, you know, God. First of all, you know, it's like, yeah, I was raised in the Baptist church, I was, you know, it's, you know, but as I got older, my mind started to expand, I realized that that don't condemn Buddhism, that don't condemn you know, uh, other religions. So I apply all of the good of religions into what I do. Well, Ian, we thank you for your phone call, and we will take a break and continue our conversation with 8 and Quick. Snoop is on his way here. Hopefully he'll get here to say hi to us before we go out there. We'll continue our conversation, though. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly am. We're back in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to BET Tonight. I'm Tavis Smiley. We are live in L.A. and we are glad that you're with us. Look who's here. <laughs> Snoop. The dog father. What's up, man? I'm straight. How you doing? I'm straight. Nice to see you. Glad you made it stuck in that traffic, huh? Yes, sir. See, you live too far out, man. I keep telling you, you got to move in the city. I know, man. You live out in the middle of nowhere, man. <laughs> How you been? <laughs> what happened to his cup? Oh, I don't get going. no BT tonight, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll for the what, cup, man. We'll, we'll get you a cup, I promise. <laughs> I'm taking this one home. Since you made it here, we'll get you a cup. That's the least I can do. Um, Snoop, since the last time you were here, and I, it's been a while since I've seen you, so I'm glad you came back to talk to me. Last time you were here, though, you were still with Death Row. Everybody knows, of course, you left and made the move to Master P. Tell me why you did it. Uh, personal decision, business decision. Um, What's the story? No Limit is a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? It was the best label in the world for me. Master P is the best director. You know what I'm saying? He's a choreographer of my career right now, so, you know, I want to thank him for stepping in and making that move and putting me in a situation where I could shine. How did the two guys hook up? Uh, mutual friends at Priority Records, we used to always meet up there, so we decided we'd take it to the next level and put a, you know, record together. One of the things that you said back in the day uh, was around, specifically around the death uh, of, uh, and I'm not going to stay here, but i got to raise this one time, around the death of Biggie and, and, and Pac, one of the issues that you raised was a fear for your own life. You still, you, you're feeling better about that these days, and now that we get further, we're further and further away from that, what's, 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 what's Give me, give me a sense of what's in your spirit these days. How you feeling about life, period? I put my life in God's hands, Tavis. I ain't yeah. tripping no more. Homie. Right. That's why I came up here by myself. Oh, yeah? Yeah, no. Huh? Yeah, no. I ain't mad at you. Uh, quick, one of the things I wanted to ask you and Aiden, I asked Snoop, of course, now he's here as well. You would, you would tell me during the commercial break that, that you thought your Rhythmalism album, which is phenomenal, you thought it was half baked, half done, just wasn't all the way there. I won't say. Are you, are you, I, I mean, are, are you two, are you guys like, your toughest critics, too tough on yourself. Your, your, your record is selling like crazy, and you think it's not good. Well, I'm, I'm not saying that it's not good. Mm -hmm. It's it just caught me in a it caught me in a kind of a straddling the fence still. Mm -hmm. You know, I, there's a, a decision that I hadn't made when the record came out, but I had already made that decision post record, post rhythmalism, mm -hmm. exit rhythmalism, enter balance and options. It's a cold record. Snoop, how, how would you say your stuff has changed? Uh, the, the sound, of, if, if at all, the sound of your music, your style, how would you say that's changed since you've been with No Limit as opposed to Death Row? Well, I got seasons all my life, man. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. You may have got the order for a little bit. I got some seasons. All my No Limit people were saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to Lynn in Ohio. Lynn, thanks for holding you on the air, and I'm glad you called, Lynn. Yes, how y'all doing? Well, how are you? Oh, okay. Um, what advice can you give a female rap artist such as myself, and how can I hook up with either one of you guys to feature on a song? 
the, the, the latter part of the question we've dealt with, I'm not trying to play a hate on Liam, but we've dealt with that question earlier about how to get in touch with folks. We'll, you know, we can help you out, Liam, maybe if we down the road if we can. But the, 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 the first part of the question is an interesting part. What, is, is there a specific advice you would give to, because she had her question was about what would you tell a female rap artist? Keep is advice you give a woman different, what do you say? Keep your clothes on. <laughs> on the real, keep your clothes on, baby. Don't let it be about sex. Don't let your, you know, your body or whatnot be the reason that you in this music thing. Let it be a talent thing, something that you know how to do that you really want to do. I think Lynn can respect that. Is it, is it, I, was, I was asking her whether or not it's, it's, if there is a, a uh, advice you would give differently to a, a woman that's fine to get in this business as opposed to a man. It, it's hard for a female to get in this business, you know, because you, we, we've been dominating the rap game. And then, you know, when females come in, you know, you got like Foxy and Lil Kim and whatever. And me, I, I like females on my, my type of thing. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Not to the fact of, you know, if she's stepping the lyrics like I can flow to and, and, and the beats is there and, and she got nice delivery, it, doesn't matter what it don't is. matter. I wouldn't care what you is. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's nice, it's nice, period. I mean, so don't put it in a category like, okay, female, how a female got to come in to how a male got to come in. Just make sure it's tight, let, 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 me, let me, I'm sorry, wait, quick, I'm sorry. <clears throat> call, call our record companies. You know, get in touch with them. You know, and they'll, they'll you know, shoot them the tape, they'll pass it to us. For sure, thank you. Call let, the record company. Let, let me back up to what you said earlier, because I, I know you meant that. You were serious. I know you weren't playing with that. Let me let me pose this question. Tim, I got to go to a break. We'll come back and get your answer on the other side of this break. But I'm wondering whether or not Snoop and Quick and Eight, whether the three of you sense that women, in fact, do sell themselves out trying to get into this game by playing too much on the sex tip and not being true to the art form of the music that they that, that, that this business ought to, in fact, be about. We'll talk about that with Snoop and Quick and Eight. I'm not going to call them rappers. They are curators of energy. And we'll continue our conversation with them in just a moment. And you're watching, and hustlers. You're, well, for that matter, so am I. But <laughs> you're watching BT tonight. We're back in just a moment. Stay with us.